Hey there people, how the frig's it going? Welcome to yet another one of these videos of mine where we're gonna try and do stuff. Now, this is a weird turn of events because a couple days ago, we had a bunch of snow. Proof of that is a little bit of snow that fell off my truck, a couple snow banks over yonder. Yup, we had some snow. It's long gone now, but we had it, but it's gone. Anyway, despite the fact that we're not getting snow, not getting a winter, I'm still gonna make the Smitty Sled. Now, I don't think I talked about this very much on the previous video, which was the let's build a mousetrap video, but basically a Smitty Sled looks a little something like this right here. All it is is a couple pair of skis like we have right here that we picked up uh, earlier in the week for $20, some kids cross country skis. These here are, I thought were gonna be a little short. However, when I lean them up against my ice shanty here, you can see they just barely peek over the top and just barely will clear the bottom. So this is the perfect length for a ski for whatever. I want to do and what we're gonna do is we're gonna build a cross brace so we got to build legs to get them up in the air and then we're gonna build a cross brace to have them uh, I want them to sit roughly one there and one there have them as wide gapped as possible I don't know I, th I think it would give more stability on the uh, on the ice while I'm pulling it now my buddy when he gave me this he already said what he used to do and I asked him about this this clip this clip and what he would do is he would clip this to the back of his uh, he had like a a bar off the back of his sled with a circle on it like an eye hook or something I don't know he said a tow bar so I'm assuming some sort of like a V bar or maybe just like a piece of pipe coming off the back of, I don't know either way he would hook this here into an eyelet and then he would just drag this on the ice and he said you know if you try to do that by hand with a rope it'd be kind of a pain in the ass now the tow bar did keep the front end up but he said it's still snow plowed it would basically um, you can see all the scrapes on here from being dragged um, it would still snow plow into the snow and build a bunch of snow and then would flop over over top of it and he said with the sled it wasn't that big of a deal but when he got to his location and he opened it up he had a lot of snow inside the device inside the uh, the the freaking contraption here inside the sh the shanty so the whole idea behind a smitty sled and you can see them everywhere tons of people make them tons of people buy this old skis they go to a salvation army or or any thrift store and they buy old skis to build smitty sleds literally you want to get these at least six inches off so we want to bring it it's going to sit around yay high off the sled so that if it does sink into the snow it'll hit the bottom of the uh shanty but not drag some people even go a little higher which is kind of absurd but you know whatever whatever you got to do do it i'm going to go six inches now i'm looking over here at my my wood pile just get around this whole contraption here to see if i have any two by sixes I see a two by four right here i see a one by six I don't see any two by sixes and I was worried about that. I thought I had some in stock, but I have a bunch of one by six. That's too thin to do what I want to do. I could glue them together, I guess, if I wanted to be that guy. Worst case, I was thinking about heading to Home Depot. Like that would probably work, this piece of wood right here. And that two by four, four inches would be way, I'd want to get at least six inches off the skis to the, uh, mind you, yeah, because it'd be two by six. I'd be eight inches up because I plan on bolting a cross beam and that would be plenty height to do what I want to do. The other problem is, is do I have wood screws? And I don't think I do. So we might have to saddle up, saddle in, head over to Home Depot, buy a single uh, two by six, or maybe even go one step further, get a two by eight. That'd be okay. Uh, get a 12 uh, a 10 footer and then we can cut it down so we can go two four footers for the cross members and then some half footers for the legs to come off the uh, skis then we just need a box of wood screws and we're ready to assemble so if you're wondering how I'm gonna mount the woods the uh, skis to the actual uh, braces I'm gonna rip a hole through the ski countersink it and go from there hopefully I don't split the ski in half because uh, these are the only skis I have as far as the existing hardware on here, I'm probably just gonna leave it because I honestly can't see how the heck this hardware was mounted. It looks like it might have been glued on because like I'm looking at it, unless there's something under the sticker. Let's take a look. Oh, uh -huh, sneaky, sneaky. So they stuck something under the sticker. Okay, well, unfortunately my car is gonna be a workbench. Just, well, when you're in the way, you get used. And I'm gonna go ahead and take the sticker off this one here. Oh, it looks like I probably, probably should have paid more attention because the sticker did come off of this one. And we'll take the sticker off the top there and then uh, we'll go ahead and grab the Phillips head and pop those mounting hardware off. There was a lot more mounting hardware in here than I thought. There's actually four screws, one at the front, one at the back, or two at the back, three at the front, five total. Crazy. All right, let me get the hardware off the other one and uh, I'll show you. Maybe all skis aren't the same, but uh, if you're doing this here, uh, you got these two at the back, but then you have one under here, one on that side, and then a hidden one underneath this white thing at the front right there. So yeah, and it looks like somebody already tried to take these off before, like these two here aren't that bad, but every single one of them on here was practically rounded out. So I ended up using a flathead that was oversized and just reefed it on. 
All right, I got all the hardware off the skis, but despise the, uh, or despise, no, despite the will to want to, I have to go to Home Depot. I'm gonna need to go to Home Depot and get some, get some wood screws. And I'm gonna get a, I'm thinking maybe even a two by eight. That's an actual valid size. Reason being is, um, I don't know what this, right now this winter is a friggin' joke. Uh, this reminds me of, can't remember what year it was, but we didn't get snow until New Year's Eve. Then we got hammed on for a bit, and then by my birthday it was gone. So, yeah, I might be doing this all for next year to be honest with you. But let me grab my wallet, wherever the hell I put that. Where the hell did I put that? All right, got the keys, got all the shite. Let's go to Home Depot, we'll get some wood screws. Cause I, all my screws are for metal because that's literally what I've been playing with for the past 10 years. All of the project wood screws that we bought for different things that we did around the house were used. And I believe dad took them with them when the project was done. So that's not a big deal. Not a big deal at all. We'll go buy some wood screws. They're not that expensive. And I think the piece of wood's probably gonna cost me like 10 bucks. I don't know, this is gonna be a good time to price out what I need for a deck for the backyard too. Not sure if I'm doing that next year, but we'll see what we do. All right, got my mask. Let's go to Home Depot. My 15th favorite store in North Bay, Home Depot. Let's go get some wood. All right, people, we got our wood. I don't know if you can see it back there, but they were nice enough to cut it down to size for no charge. So that is sweet. We got two four foot lengths and a two foot length. The two foot length, we're gonna cut up into four six inch pieces to make six inch squares that are gonna go off the skis and onto the two, uh, the, the two by six. Should give us eight inches of lift which should be more than enough to get out there on the ice, rip a hole, and give her a dangle. All right, let's go home and build. All right, people, we are back. And grab our chunks of wood here. Easier to do with two hands. So I'm gonna grab the chunks of wood, and then I'll show you what we're gonna build. So if you can envision this here six feet higher, obviously the two by fours, the legs aren't built yet. It'll be a little bit higher than that. And then basically, that the uh, snow shelter, We'll just sit on top of it and it'll be easier to pull across the ice. The reason why I'm putting the skis so wide is because I'm not only gonna be hauling the snow shelter, I'm also gonna be hauling the auger. This thing's got a little bit of weight to it, plus my fishing gear, cooler, all that's gonna go on top of everything. And we drag it out, my chair and all that. Now a lot of this, like my fishing rod, my tackle, I can put that inside of the shelter case that yellow thing the cooler however will not fit in there and neither will the auger i checked if the auger broke down it would but the auger is a solid unit so it doesn't so then what i need to do next is measure out four even pieces of this and unfortunately the only way i really have to cut it well i do have that big saw over there but i uh have to maneuver it through this freaking garage with a stupid car in it which is not exactly easy probably gonna do it by hand no i'm gonna do it by that thing all right let's see figure out a way to get this here out of here and uh, we'll do it outside, because it's gonna make a mess. Holy crap, all I gotta say is welcome to amateur hour, boys. Took me a good 15 minutes of fandangling with this damn saw, figure out how to get into this position, because it was locked down. I saw this thing in the back here. This was originally like this. And I'm like reaping on it and I'm looking around, I couldn't find anything. I saw that and I'm like, oh well, I'm like trying to take it off, but it wouldn't come off and I was about to unscrew it. I was like, you know, I better give dad a call, give dad a call. You know, just apply a little pressure, pop it off. Good to go. Freak's sakes, eh? This is why I'm a YouTuber. Fail as a carpenter. All right, well, let's go ahead and measure out that piece of wood. And this thing does have power now. Well, that would be a solid 10 4 squirrel control. Let's go ahead and measure out some pieces up to length. I think I'm gonna do five inch pieces. See, so originally I was gonna make four six inch pieces, but I forgot that when you rip wood with a saw, it knocks a 16th off every time you do it. So right now this piece here is, is uh, 23 inches, a uh, 23 and 7 eighth of an inch because they ripped it twice, right? The two four inches and then left this, or two four footers and then left this. So every time I rip it, I knock a 16th off. So I figure if I go five inch or five inch pieces, plus the two from the, um, actually that'll give me seven inches off the ground, should be more than ample. So let's get cutting. Obviously it's not mounted yet. I'm just, you know, for demonstration purposes, showing you what it's gonna be. So you'll have clearance, stuff on top. Hopefully it works. 
Should work. Maybe I want them a little higher, but ah, if this doesn't work, there's always plan B. Basically to redo it with higher supports. All right, let's get them out in the shit. All right, we got one side done. Probably look a lot better with some black paint on it, but uh, I don't have any paint. Ah, oh, that's that's a thing, I don't have any paint. So, I don't know, I'm just gonna leave it wood for now. Who cares? We don't even know if this will be high enough. It might not, it might work, who knows. Um, I'm gonna do the other one. Basically all I did was from the back, well, I'll show you on this ski here because I haven't done this one yet. So, where did I put my tape? I swear I'm becoming my father. On the back, I measured, um, let me show you. I came in four inches from where the bevel ended and then boom, boom, call it. And I'll show you here the way it mounts on the bottom. Oops. So right where the bevel ends is where I put one screw and then the other screw was a couple inches further. I believe I spaced them out two and a half inches or three inches apart, yeah. I don't think I did that for these though. I think I did these two and a half. Well, I gotta be consistent. That nah, doesn't matter. As long as they're in the same location on the other ski, we're good to go. All right guys, this is where the hardest part of this project is getting the camera set up so you guys can see what the hell I'm doing. I figured I'd show you what I'm doing on this ski here. So I marked off on the ski here. I'm gonna grab my marker and remark it. But I don't know if you can see that, those marks. But that's where the block of wood will go, is between these two here. And these two center ones are the holes I gotta drill for the screws. And I marked the same on the back side here, right there. Not exactly super accurate, but good enough good stuff. For what we're doing, who cares? So, let me get my drill armed with the correct bit. And then we'll get ripping some holes. First, I was kind of nervous drilling into these skis. I thought they were going to split, but surprisingly enough, the material drill is pretty good. I think these are fiberglass skis. See, I don't really care where the, uh, the screws go in the ski. What I care about is where the wood goes to make sure it's even on both sides and one ski doesn't stick out further than the other. A little bit of stick out, you know, whatever, who cares? But a lot of stick out causes a problem, right? Because then it looks wonky and your friends will make fun of you. All right, holes are drilled. Now we just need to mount the wood blocks. So for this, what I've been doing, this wood block splitting. Anyway, what I've been doing is mounting the wood block in the vise, holding the ski over top and running screws right through it. Because I'm literally mounting the uh, screws into the uh, the grain of the wood, I haven't been drilling. And those pieces haven't been splitting. I don't know why this one here decided to start splitting, but whatever. So, mark those lines. Make sure, oh, I should probably get a screw. Okay, you just sit there for now. Get some screws out. Please tell me I have enough screws for this project because I really don't want to have to go back. It's, it's, it's weird. 17 pieces. Who the hell freaking... Oh, I only need 17 screws for this project. What? I don't know. Home Depot for you, boys. Home Depot. Not sponsored. A channel like mine can only get sponsorships from companies that don't really exist. So this is literally all I've been doing. Been lining up the lines, making sure it's somewhat good. Feeling for center. I'm not even using any accuracy whatsoever, people. You're probably watching this if you're a... If you're a carpenter or a builder or anything, you're probably watching this just freaking cringing at the shit I'm doing, going, Adam, why don't you be more accurate? And I'm just like, because it doesn't have to be. There we go. That pinched in nice. Yeah, that's pretty good. It's on there. Some people, what they do is they'll actually uh, cut this here on a V and like angle it out like a blade so that when it does dig into the snow, it's not a flat piece that's burrowing into it so that it's kind of but we'll wait and see how this reacts and if it does act like that i may take the top off and then use something to chamfer it out like the belt sander which i probably could have done before i mounted these but whatever i can still not too worried not too worried okay let's uh grab the other piece of wood which i don't know there it is and stick you on like so like a so of course, I don't know where the hell I put them. There they are, okay. See, the hardest part right now is the barbecues in the way, because I don't really have the exact perfect amount of space to be doing all this shit in here. But, you know me, you know me. I like to do anything, even if it's completely stupid. 
Actually, I like the back end of these skis because they have that little dip that the screw sucks into. Now, this is my other screw? Yep. All right. And that is how you mount those. And like I say, if something happens that um, snow just builds up on these and makes it harder to pull, <laughs> it's got a Triforce on it. It's like Legends of Zelda. It's kind of neat. But if um, something does happen that uh, snow does build up on these and makes it hard to pull, I'll just take the top plates off, take them over to the belt sander, and flat and put like a, a slice into them, just so they can cut through the snow rather than not cut through the snow. Sweet. Let's go ahead and mount our cross braces. That should be fun. Okay. I really should have checked that. Shit. All right, guys, just ran into our first problem. Problem is, is uh, I'm kind of an idiot. I grab one and a half inch screws, and I need to go like three, four inches in. <laughs> Way to go, Skivens. All right, let me start digging through my screws here and see if I got anything that'll suffice. All right, well, I found these four inch nails. Not exactly what I wanted to use though, but they definitely would get the job did. I just didn't want to have to nail it. I wanted to screw it. So, see, wait, what are these? Where did you come from? How many are in there? Dag nabbit, I only have six. I need eight. Well, I can get started with this and then hunt around for more. That'll work. So, it's obviously not complete, I still need two more screws, but that'd be the smitty sled. Now, the way this works is when we get to their location, take our little heavy as hell ice up here, and just put it on top. Got room over here for an auger or whatever. Or you can put it dead center, which I may prefer. Put the auger on one side, chairs, all that stuff. And then I'm gonna have a rope coming off of each of one of the front pegs so that I can just haul it out on the ice. It'll make life a lot easier than trying to drag this thing by itself. Then when we get to the location, I can just stand it up or flip it upside down so it doesn't take off. Set up the ice shack, some holes. Pretty much get the dangling, right? Catch some friggin' fish. So, smithy sled is built. I need to get some rope still, or something to uh, hook onto it to pull it out there. You know, the, the one screw in the front might just be enough. I don't think it's gonna go anywhere. I think we might be okay. But there she be. So, it gives you nice clearance underneath. <clears throat> the ski should be able to carry its weight. Like I say, I still need to uh, put some ropes on the front to drag it out with, because you don't want to grab it by that. You'll slide right off the two by four. And obviously you're gonna to wanna to strap down your stuff onto the smitty sled. And the whole idea of not putting a piece of two by four or uh, plywood or anything on top of it, the whole uh, reason why I'm not doing that is you wanna keep it light because the stuff you're putting on is heavy enough and she's gonna dig into the snow. You kinda of don't want it to do that. So the lighter you keep it, the better it is. It'd work pretty friggin' awesome. So what we need now is for winter to finally come back and maybe stick around longer than a week. Like I say, I'm out here in a hoodie right now. It's only minus, uh, I think it's three degrees out. And the lake's, Circle Lake is frozen. I noticed that on my way to Home Depot. But I know the main lake is not. And even though I'm not really excited about nippusing too much, I'm more excited about the back lakes that I went to this summer, like 30 acre and 20 minute, because I know that they're stocked with splake, which is a fish I really want to get. If uh, you guys are wondering what a splake is, it's a speckled trout and a laker trout that our local Ministry of Natural Resources and Forestry have been breeding and stocking the lakes with. Um, they're really delicious and with the sports license that I will have at that time, I'll be able to catch and keep six. So that's pretty damn awesome. And they, one of them is easily enough uh, to feed a family. Would easily feed a family, definitely feed me. So if I had six of those bad boys, my goodness, life would be awesome. Anyway, people. Smitty, Smitty, uh, Smitty Sled Mark 1 is complete. I have seen people do crazy th crazy things with these where they've actually added a motor onto them and a seat so you can ride your sled out. Some people just attach it to their snow machine, drag it out. Uh, the key idea behind this is for people like me who do not have a snow machine or any plans to get a snow machine, this just means I can grab it and haul it out with not as much strain as trying to drag that ice shed out by itself. So. There you go, Smitty Sled is complete. Very basic, very easy thing to build. If you're an ice fisher, uh, I, I, if you're into ice fishing, you probably already have one or something similar. Or maybe you have one of those uh, sleds, those, I can't even remember who makes them. 
but the pelican sleds and you drag that out ice fishing i see a lot of people using those too the idea behind this is less surface area touching the snow easier to pull across where the pelicans apparently uh, i've been hearing from random people is they have a bad tendency of snow plowing where this won't so all right like i said now we just got to wait for the freaking weather to piss off so that we can actually uh go freaking ice fishing so hopefully you enjoyed today's video if you did click that like button any questions comments concerns down below they go smitty sled is completed freaking nice bring on the ice thanks for watching until next time guys live to win never give in Sit, stupid, sit. Good dog.